G'day you cheeky dogs, today we are going to be breaking down the Bluey episode, The Creek. The creek is beautiful. There's a nicer bit just up this way. We used to play there when I was a kid. Now, this is hands down one of my favourite episodes and we are going to be going through a lot of stuff in this episode. Everything from the Easter eggs to the insane amount of Australian details in this episode. The real life locations, as well as some of the theories that link in with this episode. Like how the Gila house is sort of like Bandit's old house and how that links in together. But also, of course, the whole idea of that this episode is a lesson in how to overcome anxiety in a new situation and I think it's just a really great lesson in general. Go. It's too far! But before we get into all of it don't forget to hit that like button down below if you love Bluey as much as we do here as well as that subscribe button and that bell for notifications so you know whenever I release any other Bluey videos. Okay let's roll intro and get into it. G'day cheeky dogs my name's Margie and I'm an Australian currently living in America. Starting off with our traditional Easter eggs here, and there are no tennis balls, no pineapples, no Chatter Max, but there is a very, very cool long dog. You see it in a split second, basically, when they're looking down into the actual creek itself. It is behind Bluey, and it's a little green long dog on the rock there. Now, speaking about the location, there doesn't seem to be a exact pinpoint one. There seems to be kind of like a few different ideas about what it could be. One is that it's Ithaca Creek, which would kind of work with the playground as well. There's a playground there that looks a little bit similar in like color scheme and that is right next to Ithaca Creek too. That is called Bowman Park Playground. We also had someone like tweet about that they also believed it was the Ithaca one as well so there's sort of a bit of backing on that. However in the Bluey's Brisbane podcast they did talk about it being around the Samford and Cedar Creek Valley area which is near the Gap and of course that makes sense because that is where Joe Brum lives and we know that this episode as well from interviews is based on Joe Brum's experience of him going down to a creek when he was a child and interacting with it and how he just wanted to bring that to life through Bluey. And of course this then links into the bandit house theory. The creek is beautiful. There's a nicer bit just up this way. We used to play there when I was a kid. Joe Brum of course, this show is about him and his two daughters. So of course Bandit takes a lot of characteristics from him and his two daughters. And that line that we have from Bandit is a line from Joe Brum. Here we are. Wow. I don't think I've been here since I was your age. So pulling on that idea then just within the Bluey verse sort of theory theorizing, we can assume then that if Bandit came down to this creek a lot as a kid, it means he lived close by. We know that they are already close by to their house, the Gila house, because that's how they walk home. And we know that Mackenzie's close by as well. So they're, you know, within walking distance of their house, which then means that perhaps Bandit grew up in the Gila house. And that is his family home that was passed down to him because he obviously was the first one with children. And maybe that's just how they took over it. Rad was off, you know, in the oil rigging out down the south of Australia. Stripe obviously is doing well for himself and bought himself a fancy new house. And Nana obviously just moved to an apartment in the Gold Coast so Bandit got the family home and then that would explain how they can afford that home because prices of course in Australia are astronomical at the moment. This house is falling apart. Well nothing lasts forever it's just got character. But I think that's just a fun way of how this episode of The Creek kind of plays into that Gila House theory. Also, this artwork was done by Nick Reese, who is one of the background artists at Ludo Studios, and he put this up on his Instagram account. So I'll have a link for that in the description box down below. Please definitely go and check it out. He does some awesome, awesome extra bluey artwork on there, and it's always really incredible to see. But for this particular illustration, he did say a bit of Queensland fan art, watching the bats fly over in the Arvo, bonus sketch and color rough too. But I love that this makes it look very much like they are actually inside the healer house and just kind of yeah really pushing that idea that this home is actually bandit's family home maybe we should head back there's not as many leeches in the playground now of course we see a lot of other animals in this episode none that have like the same level of function obviously as the bluey dogs in this universe but a lot of very iconic australian animals that you would see in the wildlife especially around the brisbane area so the bird that we see stretching out its wings is the australian pied cormorant also known as a shag we also see the eastern water dragon oh but there's not as many of those either as well as two different dragonflies, a blue skimmer dragonfly and a scarlet percher dragonfly as well. We see a crayfish, also known as a yabby in Australia, and of course, some sort of marsupial thing at the end. Now I say thing, because there's a bit of a debate and it seems even within Ludo Studios that there's a bit of a debate about what animal it actually is. <gasps> So in the Bluey 
books, it says that it is a potteroo, which is like a small rat-like kangaroo, basically. Now, Catriona Drummond as well, who is the art director of Bluey, also said that it was a potteroo in an interview as well. However, Joe Brum himself said that he thought that it was a wallaby in an interview. And based on like the lyrics in the song for the creek as well, it sounds more like it's a patamelon as well, which also I think maybe looks a little bit closer to it. But cheeky dogs, let me know in the comment section down below, out of these three types of possible marsupial, which one do you think? Think it is. Now, speaking of Catriona, who is the art director of Bluey, she did say that they had a lot of inspiration from a couple of different creeks in this, but in particular that this episode actually took them a month to get through art direction, when normally an episode only takes one week. And I'm sure we can all see that with just like the beautiful details that they put into every scene. It is just so gorgeous and nostalgic, I feel as well. It really pulls you into that time when like you were a kid exploring through like a bush or a forest and finding a little creek. <laughs> And she did also say as well that she pulled a lot of inspiration from Andy Goldsworthy's art where they put like leaves on rocks and that's something apparently that her and her mom used to do when she was a kid and that's something she really wanted to show in this. Ah, oh, so relaxing. It's good of you to join us in our new day spa. But before I talk about Bandit's dad jokes, of course, we do have to talk about the Cassiopeia joke. Thanks, Cassiopeia. There you go. So Bandit calls himself Cassiopeia in the very end in the day spa scene. And of course, Cassiopeia is a famous part of Greek mythology. Cassiopeia was a queen in Greek mythology and we know that Bandit is an archaeologist. So it's just like a nice little tie in there that of course he would be using like ancient people as like a lot of his like nicknames in games. We saw it with like Telemachus and things like that. So Cassiopeia is another one of those. Ah uh, yeah, okay. I'll just have to chop the leg off. Now, of course, speaking of Bandit, we should bring up like just the really countless amount of funny jokes and like teasing he does with the gals, but it is very nice teasing, of course. He does a lot of really funny jokes. You didn't get any gazontopedes on you, did you, Bingo? Gazontopedes? Are you joking? Yeah, yeah, gazontopedes aren't real. <laughs> but seriously, we have to check for ticks. But the best one and the most Australian one is the drop bear joke. And I feel like I don't know if I should explain this or not because that's kind of going against like the whole Aussie part of the joke but it is very much this thing where Australian adults in particular will make jokes about drop bears to kids but more particularly to foreigners because so many foreigners think that Australia is this super dangerous place with like all these scary animals and of course we play into that with the idea of the drop bear being the scariest animal of all but you know it's not really that scary. Make sure you watch out for drop bears. Drop bears? Are you joking? Yeah yeah I'm joking. Seriously, watch out for snakes. There are of course jokes with Mackenzie as well, especially about his breed of dog too. And also if you didn't know, Mackenzie is based off the dog from Footwork Flats from a New Zealand comic strip. So that's kind of like his tie in with New Zealand, which is really cool. But of course being a sheep dog, there are sheep jokes too. Come on Bluey, it's just like jumping from one sheep to another. We don't jump on sheep Mackenzie. Really? As well as an animation error with Mackenzie as well, at the very end, his legs are actually the wrong color. Instead of the white and black, they're just white. Some other fun little like background details though, I think that get missed very quickly is the other background characters that we see just in the very beginning. We see the terriers flossing and kind of laughing at that. So again, tying that flossing dance move back into the previous episodes, Grannies and the Market. But Buddy, Buddy is by far one of my favorite background characters because this little kid is always picking his nose and it is no different on this. He is at the top of the slide, waiting for Bandit to move, picks his nose, wipes it on the slide, which is just such a like little kid toddler thing to do. And I love that little attention to detail. But what's even funnier is that he doesn't tell Bandit to move. He just sits there waiting for him to move and ends up falling asleep on the slide, the poor thing. I really do hope that in the future one day we actually hear Buddy talk a little bit more. <laughs> now, of course, we do have to mention the incredible music in this. It of course is in the Bluey album and there are two versions to it. There's sort of the instrumental version and then the lyric version, which we see replicated again for the episode Rain and, and the other album Dance Mode. So I feel like that's a really good inclination of just like how nostalgic both of these episodes are meant to be. They really pull on that nostalgia factor of how adults felt when they were children and going through the same experience. So I really find it interesting how these two episodes kind of mirror each other in that way. <laughs> Now, let's talk about the whole lesson of this episode and the idea of how it teaches how to overcome anxiety or how to feel with fear in a new situation. Uh, actually, I might just stay in the playground if that's okay. Come on, Bluey. The creek is beautiful. Maybe I should... Come on. 
And I love when Bluey does this because it's such a great teaching moment for children, but also for adults as well. Because just because you grow up doesn't mean that you never get scared of things or you don't have anxiety. I mean, honestly, if anything, it is just the same if not a little bit different. So I think it's just again a really great way of showing us like a step-by-step -step process of how you can work your way through that. I sure are a lot of bushes. Because ah, usually the process is like panic, learning, comfort and we see that replicated through Bluey. She panics at first about how everything's so different to the playground and she gets really scared. The ground here is more uneven than in the playground. But then she goes through what we call the learning phase. She starts to voice her concerns a bit more. She starts to gain a little bit more courage with the help from her support group, so her friends and her family. Just take your time and watch out for wobbly ones. Ah, this is a wobbly one. Yeah, that's a wobbly one. And then eventually she goes from that learning stage into the comfort stage, which we see quite like visually with them relaxing in the little pond at the end as well. You'll be right, kiddo, just be brave. The creek is beautiful! Yeah. I did it! Yeah, you made it, Squirt! <laughs> yeah, I did it! So of showing again that whole cycle of how to go through anxiety in a situation or fear or in a new situation of panicking, learning, and then comfort at the end. The creek is beautiful. Ah. It's so lovely. I'm not scared of it at all. Oh. <laughs> Woo! Hey, I think I'm getting the hang of the creek. Good one. And I think it's great them showing how like vocal Bluey is throughout this as well. So it shows like if you're in that situation, vocalizing your fears can be really helpful as well as sort of talking through how you're feeling at the time. Again, a really helpful thing that you can do. But it also shows that the support you get from your family and friends can also really help you in that situation too. Look, I can do it. I can do it. Nice one, Bluey. <laughs> Something else I really love that I wanted to add in was the day spa part as well. And again, Bluey just really trying to like subvert those old school gender stereotypes of like men and boys not being into like girly things like painting your nails and day spas. So instead, of course, we see Bandit, the dad, absolutely loving it and getting into it and letting the girls and Mackenzie, who is a boy, paint his nails. And same thing, Mackenzie is just playing in the game. It's not considered like a girly game. It's, it's a day spa game and he's in there as well painting nails too. So I really love that they just show that it's a game. It doesn't have to be for girls or boys specifically. It's just for fun. Do you like your nails, Bluey Dad? Oh, I do. They're amazing. So overall for me, this hands down is one of my favorite episodes out of the entire three seasons of Bluey. So it is a five out of five long dogs for me. The music is just chef's kiss. It's absolutely beautiful. It pulls you into that nostalgia. I think almost everybody can relate to the situation of exploring and finding a creek when they're little and just like the fun you have with seeing all the different animals, even if it's a leech. Ah! How do you say? just a leech kid and again i just think it's so very australia as well just with the animals and the feel of it like it just reminded me of being home straight away and i absolutely love that but cheeky dogs let me know in that comment section down below how many long dogs would you give this episode out of five and what was your favorite moment from this episode as well the creek is beautiful while you're down there again don't forget to hit that like button as well as that subscribe button and that bell for notifications so you know whenever i release any other bluey videos but until then, I have picked your cheeky dogs out, a few other videos that maybe you would like to watch, and I'll see you all in another video. Mwah! Bye!